Uh, okay, uh, Zoom. So the Zoom video. So uh, we were talking yesterday. This was this is the trade of the week, and um, the reason it's the trade of the week is that um, they're closing New York City schools for the next five weeks. I talked to some teachers, and they're all being forced to work nearly regular hours and be on Zoom like all day. And what the the Zoom CEO, what he did, uh, he made his technology free for everyone. This is a this is a jet ski stock in, in your in your Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, mm -hmm comparison where it's like this is a recent IPO mid cap this is going to be trading very emotionally but what I love about this name is that it's not tied to the S&P or the Russell 2000 because it's a, it's a recent IPO so even if the market is down 10% this one can theoretically rage so mm -hmm. I grab it I just want to oh, I just want to jump in one second shake just because some people aren't going to aren't they're going to they're going to go over their head so when you say it's not tied to the S&P not tied to the you know the Russell what do you mean by that so it's it's not in a, any ETFs so you okay. know these ETFs are comprised, the S&P 500 is 500 stocks. So if the market's down, uh, whatever it is, 10% today, and if you're in, the e and you're in the ETF, even if you're relatively strong, your stock's most likely going to be dragged down. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm looking for stocks like this or like biotech plays or things like that where they'll shake off the market much, much more. Now, we also see these stocks sometimes become completely risk off and get dumped, but this one is a special circumstance where it's like now all of New York City, all businesses are going to be work from home. They're going to just going to see a crazy amount of application, applicational use. So mm -hmm. let's get to the trade. So here's where my job is so difficult on the weekends, where I'm making a trade of the week. It's like you look at this chart, and then we look at this like mini little flag below 114. Now the guy who was saying, should I buy this up 10%, probably meant around this 114 area, where in mm -hmm. a good market, in a trending environment, where the market is trending up at like – more than more often than not, that would be a good buy. But because we're in this crazy hyper volatile market, and I'll show you with the executions where it's like a no hesitation environment, I can't tell mm -hmm. you to buy this at 114 and give it down to 103.20. And I'll show you mm -hmm. how I traded this. Um, so I, I even called off the open. We were walking into this uh, monstrous um, gap down today. We were like, all right, we're gonna let the circuit breaker go off because we were down more than 7%. Goes off, opens 15 minutes later, and this stock's barely down. So I'm waiting to see, you know, some reaction out of the market. Uh, it's some sort of pivot. And then I'm, I'm looking to buy this thing against lows. And what I'm looking for out of the market, so I have a few, a few simple day trading rules where it's like, uh, and this is a pure day trading environment. You always, if it's a huge gap, you more often than not, right off the open, you want to go against the gap. We're down 10%. I'm not looking to short stocks. Similarly, as when we're up 2% on the, uh, in the trending up days, we're going to say we're going to let this open shake out. We're not buying stocks for the first hour because we need to consolidate that open or whatever have you. If we're down 10%, I'm more betting that we're going to snap back to down 7% than we're going to go straight to down 20%. So that's, that's the move I'm trying to capture. So whereas this ZM, we go back to the daily chart right here where it's like the 114 area looks good. You know, I buy off the open. I buy 104.50 with a 103.20 stop just to, right off that open low, and I'm kicking right into that first move. Now, I definitely could have done better taking profit-wise, been a little more patient, and this looks like I'm kicking nothing, but I bought 104.50, had a $1.30 stop, and I started kicking 108, and I got kicks off above 111, six, fucking 5 to 1 right there. But, um, you know, I, I definitely could have held on, and it is that day traders environment where I could have captured a 10 to 1 move. You know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Maybe next time I'll hold a little piece and try to trail it a little better. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very wary of this market and, and, and how nervous it is. But, so King Flipper, shouts out to him, um, our boy out in France. He was like, he bought it off the open and sold it. And then he's like, can I buy this 114 back? And it's like, that's just such a different trade than this reactionary trade. And if you're buying it, you want to buy this like 113 area, you can really only give it down to this like 110 area to try to make money. So that becomes a very difficult trade. So when we have a huge gap against us, I'm going to be looking to buy the opposite way against that gap in the strongest name. So that's why the Zoom, you know, I've been watching this name for weeks. It has the relative strength. So the gap, the 10% gap down today where this was down, you know, 2%, that was an absolute gift. Uh, I definitely could have done better selling, but... Um, I, I'm, I'm happy making money in this environment. I'm just trying to check off wins here. And it still ended up being, you know, a four to one risk reward win you know, in, in 15 minutes. Can't, yeah. can't be too mad at that. Can't, definitely can't complain. Um, any other charts you want to go over for good trade, bad trade? No, I just, uh, I just want to let everyone know, you know, I, I say things like um, charts go out the window in this environment. And that's what mm -hmm. I mean, where it's like you don't buy through 114 in this environment. You find a favorite fucking name. 
you buy and you buy uh, intraday move, you give it to a, a pivot low and things like that. It just everything kind of changes in this environment. We don't really want to teach this stuff because, you know, this isn't where I make my money. My money is made swing trading in trending markets. Like, let that be very clear. But, mm -hmm. you know, there is money to be made during this time. If I'm sitting here, you know, and I, and I can take advantage of the situation and I have value to provide people, I'll tell them. But, you know, the money is definitely still made to, to swing trading long side in better environments. But right now, you know, it's some intraday action. You know, yeah. Keep us I think we might have to make like a, a circuit breaker buy rule where if the name's up more than four <laughs> percent, you just you can't buy it. It's like yeah. <laughs> like that. I think that'll probably will just help you know, most people. It's funny because these look like terrible kicks on my screen. You can't see right now, but it's like yeah. uh, I took it off in the first fifteen minutes. But it's just that the stock's range today, range was one hundred three to one hundred twenty. It's like. Things are really stressing. <laughs> the years, the years right, worth of trading. Right, right. You know, uh, oh like man, this, if I could have gotten that 104.50, that 120 kick, that would have been special yeah, next like, time. Yeah. But, but I, you know, I hope I hope people can hear the difference in in how I'm trading now versus how I really make my money, and how you just have to shrink everything down and kind of think like as we're saying, you have to buy when it's ugly off the open. We were down 10% when I bought this stock, you know, and I was mm -hmm. just kicking into the snapback move of the spy. I didn't, I didn't anticipate us snapping back as much as we did, but whatever. I made money on a day when the, the market ended 11% and I made money long. So, you know, I can't yeah. be mad. Um, so with that being said, we can go into some of my bad trades. Then right. these all are lower than where I bought them at. But some, you know, hopefully some examples that are and some lessons. Disney? Them. But yeah, we can start with Disney. Right. Um, so again, this is a name that, you know, being in the year, we were all pretty much waiting to buy like that 144. 145, 150 area, you know, that earnings flag, and it's gotten, you know, absolutely destroyed recently. So if you pull up that that chart that I sent you over, I, I, try, I try to draw, you know, that like macro level support that I was keeping an eye on, and I was, you know, a little bit too early. You know, so I bought up 396, and again, down here, I can't be absolutely perfect. You know, I can't, you know, buy 96 versus 92 and, and expect that low to hold. Like, I have to expect this to be a little bit more wide, a little bit more of like a feel versus when we're at highs buying through resistance. It's much more just you know repetitive. You know, buy up, sell up, blow a day, and then let it work. We're down here. If I could buy ninety six, and I have to give it a couple dollars, you know, in a few months if we get back up into this one forty area, I'm gonna have really good stock where I don't mind having to give it some wiggle room. But again, I'm not jumping in with both feet. You know, betting everything I have on Disney at ninety six. I'm buying a little bit where if it still heads lower, I can still pick some more up. And then look to dollar cost average when that turn does happen. So again, I can't time the perfect low, um, but getting this you know 30, 40 percent off highs to me, you know, Disney's not going anywhere in a year. We're still going to be going there. Um, so it's just a little bit lower than my current price. It's down one dollar from where I bought. I bought ninety six. Is that ninety five? You know, I'm okay with that. Um, UTX was probably one of my better trades last week. Um, again, we, we talked about it before. On that, what was it the tenth? It was like I think it was on Thursday or Friday. That big green day up, you oh, know, you gotta, you gotta UTX. Hold on. Let me get the daily. Oh, okay. You can you can leave the weekly. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. No, no. I, got both. Um, I got both. Look at this. So, Look at this service. <laughs> so again, uh, UTX had dropped daily. you know forty two percent this month. Huge conglomerate. Opened down ten percent that day. It was a super little like doji at you know off the open. And again, the super little doji was a four to four point range. Right. So all I simply wanted to do was I wanted to buy up through ninety six, which was the high of the day, versus the low, which was ninety two, and I proceeded to you know completely fill that gap, um, and the next day it opened up a little bit higher than again completely reversed. But in this trade, you know this four dollars risk, you know it's like if, if Shake was taking this, you would have crushed it because you would have you've been taking profits off the whole way up into that move. Yeah. For me, it was just I was trying to get somewhere I can you know just be in it for a move, you know back to highs, you know. Down the you know a year from now, yeah. um, and I know Drew Drew Bauman was in it, and he lost nothing, and he bought ninety six, rode up to one hundred eight, and then he got out break even, so he was able to be in for you know a crazy percentage move in two days and not lose anything. Where if you know if he didn't you know understand the you know, break even stops, things like that, he would probably be trapped in this name right now and be stuck in it. Where for him it's like he lost nothing, he can get very right back in in a week or two, and it's not going to matter to him. Um, and then lastly, was this American Express? Um, so this one again, I was a little early too. It's a recurring theme. Um, tried to buy up through that ninety, pretty much up through that hundred level, 
Um, and now it's just below it. So now like the next ad, again, it's still super wide. I don't really want to be buying up through 94, but I know right now really the out is like 80. Yeah. Uh, so again, this needs some time. This needs like a week or two to kind of, you know, it probably will still shake 80. We can easily still shake that out. But we need, like once it can start to consolidate down here and get it moved back up through, you know, that 90, that 94, and then 100 down the road. Like this is where I'm trying to build in to these positions as they start to turn. But again, these are very difficult trades to kind of teach people because it just takes some time. And even when we think of like Yeti, you know, a few months ago, we had a great trade in it, you know, up through 35 into that all-time highs. And at that time, when it looked amazing, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the guys were like, this is a long-term hold. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to hold it forever. And if you kept that mentality right now, you're down 50%. You're probably really pissed off. So that's where, again, there can be great opportunities to hold things longer term right now. But you or I don't know what those names are going to be. I'm just trying to get those deals now. And if you know American Express in two weeks wants to rip back up through 100, then I'll know I probably have some good stock in my hands. But these are things that you or I or the next guy aren't really going to know unless you've done it before. You know, It's very hard to just buy something today and sit through some of these pullbacks and expect to hold it back to your price and then profitable. And that's really a lot of these lessons that traders will learn when they talk about long-term hold. When you buy on the way down, we talk we call it the round trip lesson where you try to get the perfect price on the way down, you sit through all the pain, and then as the stock does start to turn and it gets back to your price, usually mean the stock's going to even trade higher. Psychologically, you're just in so much pain with the name, you just immediately get out at break even. And I've done this more times than I can count. But as you do it enough, you start to learn, you know, okay, now the stock's back to my price. As much as I want to sell it, this pro stock in time is probably going to start drifting higher. So I have to kind of sit on my hands. Um, so these are just some lessons that, again, they're very hard to learn when the market's gapping up or down 10, 20, you know, 10% or individual names 10 or 20%. So I'm being very light in these names. And I'm more heavily focused on dollar cost averaging in the broader sectors. Because, again, the financial sector isn't going anywhere. The telecommunication sector is not going anywhere. In a year from now, you're going to still use your phone. You're still going to you know, use a bank. So I'm putting much more of my focus on just buying the broader sectors and markets, just dollar cost averaging. And then for the individual names, it's just the Dow 30, you know, large cap, the you know, best in breed, and focusing on that and, and forgetting the small caps or mid caps or some of those you know, jet ski type names. So that's that's all I got, Jake. Um, uh, I think we we can jump into uh, trade of the week if you have nothing else to add. Book of the week. No, we got uh, trade of the week. Oh, what I'm looking at? Yeah. Oh, I got I got to fucking do research. 